Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartook-69. Last time on the Bard's podcast, the party spotted signs of life across the valley as the rain turned into a tumultuous thunderstorm. A harrowing crossing was implemented by Fargus the Ranger using the last of the party's rope. With the majority of the party making their way across the rushing river, it was Karina's turn. As the storm increased in intensity, a stray log struck the wave's horse, knocking them both into the rushing water. Peepers, the axe beak, went in after its mistress, but the group quickly lost sight of their waterlogged associates. Bulger the gnome raced his horse forward, but returned a short time later with sad news. We rejoin them as the rain continues to pound against the party members. What do you mean, smashed? exclaimed an upset sister Elaine. The squat gnome gave his angry retort as he wiped away tears using graphic and disturbing words. The torrent of anger shocked the mage, cleric, and ranger as they had never seen bulgers so angry. Clearly, Karina's mount was dead, but the former sailor turned adventurer had not yet discovered the wave's body. Just over the din of a storm, the party heard Cabe Silvertongue yelling. Straining to hear over the rolling thunder, Lady Irena determined that the bard wanted to know if he should come to the other side. Fargus motioned for the half-elf to return to the search and requested the other three set up camp. Walking parallel on opposite banks, the two delvers searched the water's edge for any signs of their missing companion. After a mile, a mountain barred the way for Cabe to continue searching and was waved off by Fargus. The human ranger, undaunted, continued to move along the swollen river, hoping to find any signs of the waif. Scanning the edge of the stream, Fargus spotted a boot stuck on a protruding root as a lightning illuminated the area. Leaning over the side of the bank, he reached out and was able to snatch the footwear just as a bolt of lightning struck a nearby tree cracking as it hit. A limb, shattered by the impact, fell from the tree, landing atop the prone ranger, pinning him to the heavy branch. The man struggled to free himself, but the weight was too substantial. Pushing up with all his might, he began to lift the branch, but then caught sight of a runaway log headed right for his face in the stream. As the spinning tree trunk headed his way, it was clear that if he couldn't free himself, he was going to be bashed in the skull. His Herculean effort began to pay off just as his hand slipped in the mud and his head bounced off the pa passing log. The branch on his back smashed his face down below the waterline as blood fro flowed freely from a nasty cut to his cheek. Too weak from the issue, his eyes began to close and he could no longer fight against the water filling his mouth and lungs. The ranger's eyes closed as death came for him. Sun peeked through the curtains and warmed Fargus' face. Blinking several times, the room in around him came into focus. It was a chamber he knew very well. The room he had stayed in prior to leaving on his fateful trip to Phoenix so long ago. The world had changed and he had just had the strangest dream of his life. Rubbing the sleep from his eyes, he heard the soft voice of Ray Day, his old flame. The lethe blonde stepped in front of the sunlight, shielding the ranger from its warm glow. Awake, my love? asked Ray Day, as she sat down on the bed next to him and began to caress his arm. Fargus nodded sluggishly and spoke her name aloud. I had the strangest dream, my sweet. I was out on the trail with a group of friends. One of them fell into the river and I was going to help her. The man's voice trailed off as memories flooded his brain. I was out on the trail because... because you... You had died, Ray Day. I left because you died. But here you are, with me now. How is that possible? The blonde woman grinned spitefully at her lover. Never fear, Fargus. I am here. You are here. You need only kiss me, and we can be together for all time. 
The ranger smiled meekly and leaned up, pressing his lips against hers, enjoying the soft embrace. Another crack of lightning roused the ranger from his stupor, and rain cascaded across his face. He could taste the salty blood in his mouth, and he noticed leaning over him was Karina, with a look of shock on her face. Her hand went to her mouth and she fell backwards, shocked at the kiss. With blood in his eye, the ranger struggled to get up and noticed that the branch that had pinned him down had been pulled to one side, and Peepers, the axe beak, doinked him in the head with its thick skull. Oh, what? What are you doing? exclaimed the waif, still shocked from the kiss. As the ranger's head began to clear, he suddenly realized that he had been kissing her. His face flushed red and he stammered out an apology as the rain beat down on both of them. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I thought you were someone else, he admitted. Karina looked around several times and pointed out that she was the only one around. She struggled to her feet and put a hand out to help the groggy man to his own. Once upright, he realized that the waif had several injuries and was wobbly on her feet. Several minor cuts covered her hands and neck, and he asked what had happened. Karina away, wiped away the blood from a small cut to her forehead, and she quickly relayed the information about being rescued from the raging re river by Peepers, who proved to be a better swimmer than expected. She pointed out that the axe beak had found her and moved her to the shoreline. She had suffered a variety of minor wounds to, and her knee hurt, but she would survive. She kept staring at Fargus, who felt sheepish under the watchful gaze. His mind raced as to determining how to handle the awkward situation when she stumbled. It was clear that she was having difficulty moving and needed healing. Peepers moved forward and popped its head between the young woman's legs and slid her backwards to the creature's strong back. Taken off guard, she attempted to rebuke Peepers, but the creature stood firm and easily held the woman's weight. Fargus chuckled at the sight and told Karina that her pet had grown up over the course of the last several weeks. The waif patted the creature's neck, causing it to coo loudly. Fargus walked along beside the pair, rubbing his shoulder that was sore from the tree branch, but noticed that the axe beak was quite sturdy and handled the weight of his mistress easily. The man mused that it appeared that Karina had a new mount. After walking just over a mile, they spied a group of horses familiar to them, and realized that the rest of the party must be located inside the concealed adventurer's tent. The closer they got, the pair noticed rain running off a hidden structure. Peepers knelt down and allowed a feeble Karina to walk in with the assistance of the large human. As they entered the tent, Kay, Belaine, Irena, and Bulger perked right up with broad smiles crossing their faces as they spotted the waterlogged girl. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening. <laughs>